speaking sucks. Let's write code. All right, so last time we got things to the point where um, we are able to run. Uh, I. Nest test.nest. So we can now run um, the validator, which breaks um, relatively quickly, although we did fix one bug. So that's nice. Um, we previously talked about, um, about having tests, but hey, we have an entire well, like well documented, well understood validation program that we can use. And that means that we've got all the tests in the fucking world. It's not true. We have we have an explicitly finite number of tests, but it's a good number. Um, I should grab the known good run log. Let's go ahead and do that. figure out what breaking this up is going to look like. All right, so we have pretty consistent consistent formatting here. This the, Writing a parser for this should be pretty straightforward. So that's, that's what I'm going to start with. Um, that way we can pretty easily compare the input um, of the known good log run to output from our log runs. You're going to have to work uh, because now is the th time that things break. Hey, no worries. I hope that you, uh, I hope things go well for hanging out. It's true. You can tell that, that I'm currently on Arrakis um, on account of the fact that really there's, it's no good code here. It's just, it's a desert of ideas. See, see, see how that works? Works great. So, cool. so we're doing capture groups. Yeah, this is, I think three bytes is the max that we're ever going to see for an opcode. This format's never going to break. Looking like three bytes is a max for the output. Exactly two. We 
between one and three of them. Right. Space. There we go. Oh, wait. Hmm. Nope. I've actually got to break this up a little bit more. And capture outer group, but not the inner group. Perfect. Now, if I add a space, this should break. Great. All right, so, so far, we are capturing this, these, give me the, the longest mnemonic that we have. I need to see a real gross one. I'm willing to bet, here we go, this actually looks pretty good. I feel comfortable asserting that I can capture all characters and terminate in three spaces, and that's going to be safe. need to say um, exactly one of that because that's fine. One more space. Actually, that, that's going to work great. Again, a hex digit. Hidden. Copy this. Hex digit. It's a hex digit. Still working. That's good. PSP. Hex digit. SP. Hex digit. Still working. Unfortunately, I do have to capture PPU space PPU do space exclamation point. Nine A to F. I'm not sure that I see any hex digits there. Yeah, we're not doing hex, we're doing real numbers. Here to nine, comma. And then cycle. Actually, wait, I don't even have to do this. I can just say, blob everything until we get to cycle. And then it's a number. Cool. All right, so that's a, a real monster. Let's um, let's make sure that that work does not get lost. Wait. 
It's our first step. Maybe for the middle part, instead of uh, lobbing everything, I could do uh, capture group not space plus, followed by any space, followed by or three, three times. I love how IRB is not playing nice with read line. using the non-greedy match to not have trailing white space. Um, yeah, that should also work. I'm not convinced that in this case it's better. Yeah, unfortunately with, um, with code streams, um, having high quality is sort of non-negotiable. The good news is that I do record all of my Tech Tuesday streams and I throw them on YouTube. So, uh, worst case, everything from the very beginning of developing the simulator all the way through uh, to here and, uh, of course, beyond is um, all going to be preserved. I have to remember how Ruby Hand is captured. Right. Nope. It's X dot match, which is different. There we go. Just cool. All right. I think that I actually might keep it stringified.
it's going to be AX1. Flags I might I might um, convert to int. I'm not sure that I care yet. Alright, so we've got a parser. That's nice. Um, it's hacky, it's quick and dirty. I don't actually care too terribly much. Um, next up, we need to build in some, some logging to the emulator itself. for the Twitch Prime sub. 31 months. It is. It's, it's emulator used day. That's correct. does not have shovel. Has right. I don't think string has right. Sure doesn't. Neat.
Dang. I'm getting the guinea pigs in my chat. Oh, nice. Okay, that's expected. That's one. This should give me a new M log. We're going to simplify this. This doesn't. I don't I don't know what that good emote is from, but. I feel like I should like it. You should learn Ruby so you understand the syntax. Um, I am I am uh, venturing pretty well away from what most people who do Ruby uh, tend to use, largely because most of the syntax that you tend to see in Ruby is Rails centric, and I don't do a ton of Rails. I do I do Haskell in my, in my spare time. Um,
in theory, I I want to be able to pass a string or a um, or an, uh, an IO FD to a logger um, class. But at this point, um, instead of writing a kind of hacky monadic thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna not. I'm gonna say we don't need to pass a writing um, method. Oh, it's because I'm returning self. This is, in fact, much easier. That I made it. There we go. This is actually still sort of, um, this is nowhere near as monadic as it's pretending to be, but it should work. Arguments game. I do away with something? I did. So now I can easily enough um, yeah now I can easily enough uh, use this with sp uh, a string or with nothing or with um, an IO object so that's what I was hoping for there is kind of MATLAB's and Python's child. I'm not sure that I would agree with you there. Ruby is more small talk and Lisp's child, if anything. With definitely a little bit of um, Perl thrown in. All right, so we've got a logger. Probably move to... It's defined by def block. We're going to defer that and do def block. Block will. Let's take a look at how block looks here. cycles. Yeah. 
It is under CPU DSL, I just didn't see it. It's right here. I'm thinking right now, uh, just to externalize uh, what I think the first problem we're going to run into is. If we take a look at the log, the first time that we change anything, we're on cycle 7, which tells me that it's very likely that I'm actually um, I'm going to end up realizing that I'm taking action on the on the rising um, rising edge of the first clock of things happening. So that's a bug. We're going to have to fix that. That's going to be one of the first things we have to fix tonight. Ryudo, thank you very much for the sub. I hope that you're doing well. Everyone who's here, take a moment. I'm going to take a sip of water so you're not going to miss any programming. Go follow Rita. He's got a gamer brain. that I see the way to fix this. I think that it's actually going to be in the death box. method here. Instead of deferring clock, we're actually going to defer Is it either? It's a bunch of code that I get to just delete. That's nice. Do I have all of my opcodes setting cycles first? No, they're all setting cycles last. Um, does it actually matter which order they do it in? Kind of sucks if it needs to. The good news is that this is 100% in, like, this, this is probably not in the CPU DSL um, in terms of responsibility. have to figure out
do have to figure out how to make this work. I'm not going to worry about it for right now. I'm going to let that be future Tina's problem. Right now we just want logging working. Logging working does belong inside the clock method. Unless it belongs in off. Oh, it might belong in off. Oh. There we go. This should at least not super duper break. Alright. Alright, so we are definitely Definitely running into that problem, which is a bummer. Why do I even bother with clock edges? Because I'm trying to make a cycle accurate emulator and that's required. How's IRL language learning going? Slow. All right, so to catch up, we wrote a not actually monadic uh, log encapsulator. We are having the CPU DSL be willing to accept that not actually monadic log encapsulator so that I can start producing some log output that we can use to compare to the, um, the known good run. Now we're going to actually...
sorry. Now, we're not good yet, but I want to see logging data actually get written. This is gonna... Okay. Fair. Actually... Pretty sure just file.new always works, even if... Even if the file exists, it'll just open it. Go, oh, that's clobber. Alright. Give me file open flags. You ever do something real dumb? Yeah, me too. Cool. It's a good first step. Let's have line one. That's going to be our template. I'm skipping the the uh, mnemonic for now. It's coming back soon. Processor flags. Got some chat to catch up on. 
yeah, I've recently learned that um, apparently mozzarella in Finland is, is called moomin meat, which is great. Garden. You have 6502 and Z80 books. They both made the cut on the Great Book Purge before relocating. Nice. Dominic series. Hello from Germany? Well, hello from Finland. Actual Sasquatch. Welcome in. You were just telling somebody about how you bought a book on 6502 Assembly and never opened it? If you're interested in 6502 Assembly in particular, um, Vigraytech is rad as hell and very, very um, skillful with the 6502. Um, lately, every single day, you can catch Vigraytech doing streams, working on a NES program to track the ISS, which is Fucking cool. It's super cool. Well, I mean, it's just the 5A22 isn't to 65816. It's very similar, but it's specifically built to dodge all the patents that are applicable. Yeah, Vaya's rad. I'm super glad that we met. Uh, we've met a couple times now. Um, just one of those people that you meet and go, fuck, someday I hope I'm this smart, almost, kind of. Did I say an NES program to track the ISS? As in the 8-bit Nintendo Entertainment System and the International Space Station? Yep, that sure is exactly what I said. Have I mentioned how fucking talented and skillful by Grey Tech is? Look, I'm excited to get to share, let's be honest, kind of okay content with a lot of friends. And I get to hang out, I get to do code, do speedruns, play video games that are brand new and get people excited about them. That's awesome. But one of the most important things that I can do and one of the things that I'm happiest that I get to do is I can share with my friends all the cool shit that my friends do. All right, so first thing first, we're actually going to send the deferred op um, so that we can record the state after, not before. Let's start. Oh, actually. Defining... Finding the logger here also doesn't make sense. We want to call the log here. But it doesn't make sense if we're keeping this generic. We actually... We need to rewrite mlog. Um, specifically, mlog should be arity1. The arity1? Hmm. 
the write function should be arity1. This is gonna break. It's gonna break until and this is actually fine too. Right doesn't get a string, it's getting a CPU now. Which is fine. We're getting actual out and the CPU. Okay. In the future, I might change this so that it gives a struct of info. Um, but there's only so much that you can extrapolate um, and stay generic. I keep that C so that I don't interact or intersect with anything. Register. Yep. Here. Register is PC. Just gonna, we're gonna watch PC for now. That's fine. Oh, dang. I didn't know that uh, Vi was suggesting me on their Twitch. That's rad. Seraph, hello. It's true, Seraph is real cool. I've enjoyed hanging out with Seraph at GDQs. a concern. All right. It's 
So from here we're good until C7 to C. Oh hey, well that's the problem right there. JSR. Hey, we just found our just found the broken uh, thing. Let's fix that, and we'll go back to thinking about logging. weird. That's actually real weird. It's because I advanced twice. Of course it is. Okay. That makes more sense. It's not weird anymore. might want to make it so I'm not holding down the inner button anymore, but right now it's it's working. Where's let's just do that. Do real quick now. Yep. Seven D A. JSR again. I'm apparently just real bad at JSR. DBC7 makes sense. Reading. We went to DA. is not. Hmm. It did hit C C six zero zero, right? Oh, no, we didn't. Interesting. D70A is the RTS one lineup. Oh, you're right. Thank you. C7DA would be the return.
why did I do this? <laughs> that seems seems like a real strange thing for me to have done. So we're still... So we're, we're back to that not working. So that actually does make sense. Hitting the RTS. All right, officially at the point where I do, I do need to start giving myself more, more context from the log. Bummer. Yo, mini map. Thank you very much for the host. Welcome in, everyone. I'm Tina. I usually do speedruns, but every Tuesday I do random tech shit. Um, and recently it's been writing. Well. Writing a domain-specific language through which we can define an emulator and then using that to define a 6502 emulator, which we are now going through with a uh, verification ROM. Um, just getting started, getting things actually accurate. If anybody here isn't familiar with Minimap, um, I mean, I, I originally knew Minimap for fighting game content, but um, just all around, super fun streamer, super chill stream to hang out in. Um, Minimap has, uh, like, created a real danger for me to, to finally, like, seriously learn Ricci and start um, start playing. So we're, we're popping low then, or at least than most significant, but we're pushing. We're pushing least than most significant. That's wrong. That order sure is wrong, isn't it? Some egrets. How's it going? It's Minimat's URL. Minimat's URL is twitch.tv slash Minimat. An extra T in there. Yeah, either push or pop is wrong order for sure here. Uh, let me pull up. Data sheet. All right, so pulls the low bite first, which means I need to be pushing low bite last. I think that's the same RTS. Yep. Wrapped. All right, time to actually implement logging. Um, for now, I actually 
really only need processor flags. We can add the rest of the log later. Y stack pointer flags. Sounds right. S or SP? I feel like I called it SP, but nope, called it S. PCR guy, how's it going? What am I doing here, making an NES simulator? Well, uh, to be sure, uh, the CPU has to work first. But whenever I do tech streams, and, and I try to do them roughly once a week, uh, the aim is rarely to make something that is, uh, th that's going to be um, the most performant or like the best that there is. The aim is always to be as didactic as I can. So while sometimes I will like bang a few lines of code out, I always want to go back and revisit, make sure that everybody in chat is following along. Um, there's plenty of people who are fairly interested um, just in learning more about tech, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to do everything that I can to make it, make it good for them. cycle. We're not going to care about that for now either. Alright, so the first thing that I notice, um, besides the fact that stack and processor flags are in an opposite order, is that processor flags are starting two bits set. Um, those are interrupt, disable, and un and unused set potentially. Hmm. I don't think that I, I, I don't think that this is processor flags. This would be weird for it to be. No. No. We've got what three flags? Four flags. Two flag or no, three flags. <laughs> Maybe. And we're, we're tending to see the same. Yeah, yeah, that, that could well actually just be flags. 
I won't worry about flags yet, but um, for sure, the stack pointer is meant to apparently grow down. For some reason, I thought that I read that it grows up. Let's see, we're gonna we're defining a stack. I'm not sure what I was thinking here, but this is um, going to zero out. This, this is definitely not what I meant to do. Um, this is not going to what I meant to do. Am I doing, am I following that pattern anywhere else in here? Because shouldn't be working anywhere that it exists. Yeah, there we go. One shift bits minus one makes sense. the only place I'm doing that. Regardless, uh, we need to look back at def stack. So, things that I immediately notice here. Got a direction, which is good. setting the stack new value wrong, which is bad. Uh, there are some stacks that grow that grow up. Can I dart into a meeting? Well, thank you for hanging out. But yes, um, in a huge number of um, word that I'm looking for. Uh, in a huge number of um, lang uh, of not languages of architectures, you will have stacks that grow down. I sworn that I read that it grows up, although the the log clearly shows it um, growing down. So. You know that the base is 100. know that this one grows down. This is 8 bits. Yep. 
other thing that stands out to me is that instructions at C0. The jump. I'm actually not sure why we're starting at FD and not FF. Go ahead and define an initial value. There we go. Found a bug, which I don't think would have. Oh no, actually, that would have been causing the jump. That definitely would have been causing the jump. So we should probably get to a new spot here where we die. Just kidding. You never actually said. Now, now I'm mildly annoyed. Figure it out, though. Is the direction argument to def stack ever used? Uh, so, bear person, two things that are important. Um, one, this is a DSL, so even if I'm not using something in the immediate implementation of a 6502, it's uh, something that I do anticipate potentially being used. Oh, I see what you're asking now. You're seeing that I changed what was being called, but you don't see where it's being used. Uh, that's because it's apparently not being used because I'm a doofus. Ooh. Okay. easy to fix. So, we've got a value. Write the value we expect it to, and then we need to change This is a push, which means we're going to grow in our direction.
go. Setting automatically does our bounds check for us, which is good. So pop is... do things very slightly differently. Or an 8 bit processor that should be 1 8 minus 8 over 8. It's 1. Cool. Double checking the math there because who oh boy am I not braining today? Like I said, not not braining. Now we have our offset. We are adding to our offset in bytes um, away from max, which uh, is as we exist in a ring is going to be fraction. Seems good. I think that fixes that bug. All right, well, the stack pointer ever changes, which is good now, but. Check the def stack, take a base, take a direction, which it did appear was working. We take an init. Looks like we're not using the init. We're not using the init because of the fact we're, we're operating inside the 
operating inside the, the greater class context. Take a look. Need to get CPU DSL, CPU 65, 2, TH8. I I knew why I kept on ending up with uh, things pausing here. Pixie, evening. Uh, increment slash decrement the address, SP, on each right, depending on direction. Yeah, we're doing that. So here, we are calculating a new SP. So here we've pushed. So we send direction, then Calculate how far we need to move, how many bytes we need to move. We add it to our uh, base offset. Offset we're getting here. So, hey. Why am I reassigning offset? That's not good. Oh, no, no, no. Because we're, we're defining base, not offset. Uh, which means that actually, I need that also. Oh, hey, a bunch of what I've done here is unnecessary. Let's undo some of this work. So I was looking at offset and I was thinking that that was our base address. When I do, why don't I do the uh, same new SP assignment in both push and pop with inverted direction? That's literally what I did. So offset is my register name. It is important to remember that Ruby um, because it doesn't have fixed uh, size integers, uh, really, really does not like dealing with um, negative number bit masks. So because of that, we did a little bit of math for pop. Or the way that we calculated our new SP Was by creating an overflow.
still really don't like the fact that my instance variable is never actually being set. I'm not sure why not. Moss 6502. Show me register S. That is extremely zero. That's why. think that any of these sets inside this init matters. Tempted to set my processor flags to 24 by default. Reason not to is apparently correct. Actually, I think that the initialization routine is more interesting than that. Um, but for simplicity's sake, that's going to be fine for now. Um, flags. Go ahead and set that appropriately. I'm going to change the order of things in this. Cap 
capitalize these X's. To fix cognitive overload. Blazon, how's it going? What kind of Linux? Uh, this is just an Arch VM. Not sure you see the need for overflow here. We're not making a bitmap mask. We're asking how many bytes do we need to move the stack pointer? Uh, bear person, under what conditions do you think that the stack pointer at the hardware level is uh, going to have negative bits set? Like we're we're modeling hardware so it's important to keep in mind that there is a physical limitation so convenient way that i have for making sure that i never have more bits set than uh, are necessary uh, is any time that i call set register name and then the register itself uh, we're enforcing the correct bit size because again Ruby doesn't have fixed bit size uh, integers. It also doesn't have the concept of unsigned integers. That work falls to you. It's not the purpose that Ruby was built for. So the way that we need to, if we're writing something that requires that sort of rigor, uh, handle this is either through enforcing it via masks or doing a ton of predicate work all throughout your code and that's gross um, the fewer predicates that my code has the happier I am just as a human being Ruby exploit modules in Metasploit yeah that's fair um, that's that's a good place to pick up like pretty basic Ruby um, most of what is inside of a, a Metasploit module is you know not honestly interesting from a Ruby standpoint. It's meta or not Metasploit. Well, it's Metasploit logic, but more to the point, it's it's exploit logic. You understand the bit mask, you just the bits over eight seem strange. That's fair. And if we were only ever thinking, hey, this should be just for the 6502, I would agree with you. However, what if I decide that I want to make, um, I want to use this DSL uh, to also describe a 5A22, a 16 bit CPU? All of a sudden, I need to know just magically that. I have to move two bytes instead of one. And while it could fall to the person consuming the DSL to know, hey, I've got to do this, maybe, uh, uh, or not even maybe, another valid way to approach this would be saying when you're defining the, um, the stack operations, you're required to pass a one arity function so that we can just keep track of like what pushing and popping looks like. That might that might be a valid way of doing things. I think that makes it a little bit messier because realistically, like we know that we're dealing with in bits for a value of in. And we know that, you know, some registers might have a differing number of bits. Uh, it's real clear, for example, in the fact that our um, our PC is 16 bits, whereas literally everything else is 8. But because of that, if we if we have if we spent a ton of money, right, when we were de designing this CPU and we said, let's go ahead and um, let's make it so that the um, the stack was actually 16 bits for some reason. Or like we had a 16 bit, like X was 16 bits so that you could do 
bigger number of arithmetic on it more efficiently. At that point, push X, like, we couldn't just go, all right, I've pushed one register, so, well, it's time to, to move exactly, you know, move just one byte. But yeah, it's, it's all about the fact that because this is a DSL, we're aiming for things to be as general purpose as possible. Oh wow, our stack pointer did some real weird shit. No, it didn't. I'm just a doofus. Hey, there we go. All right, well, the good news is that that means that in theory, things look correct. becomes a bigger problem when you consider the fact that that means that um, something is misbehaving in a way that is a little bit less uh, easy to track down, but I'll track it down. Um, for now, though, I think it's been like two hours. I am going to stretch my legs, refill my water, uh, use the restroom and so on. Um, now is a good time for everybody else to do the same thing. Stretch your legs, get a drink of water, etc., etc. Um, because of the fact that Twitch now is doing random mid-roll ads, I'm going to click the run ad button, which which says we'll make it so that they don't do random ads. So, you know, water's delicious and you should, you should refill your glass because your glass isn't where the ad is running. So I will catch you all in just a few minutes and, uh, you yeah, know, we'll keep on going at it.
Pam back. Yeah, JSR is doing some weird stuff right now. That's that's our current. Um, or actually, it, it might not be JSR. It it could well be RTS. That's the problem. Um, let's change our dump. We don't need. I don't need hex 80 bytes from. But we, we know that we know that we're getting exactly what we want. We'll pull 256 bytes uh, from where the stack pointer starts. Um, we'll take a look at that. Let's see. Let's see what our, our stack space looks like after we run. Okay, well, not what I expected, admittedly. C600, is that what we were meant to, is that where we were when we RTF, or when we um, JSR? They potentially. It is. It is where we were. Um, unfortunate. I just found the tidbit that I interpreted um, as the stack growing uh, uh, incrementing um, uh, in the, the document that I'm looking at. It's described as working top down, which uh, makes sense if you're thinking about your address space starting at zero and then going up to FFFF. -F -F -F. Um, but I usually just, the way that I tend to lay things out in my head, I usually invert that where zero is at the very top and then it grows down. Um, neither here nor there though. We are we zero zero CX on the stack. Okay. There's F E F F. We're starting at F D, so C six zero zero, and then we should be popping off zero zero, then C six. And I know exactly what the problem is. Our pop operation is um, working one byte offset. We've got just a real, real obvious problem there. Um, so we're popping zero zero, then we're popping the zero zero that we pushed onto the stack. Um, but it's it's a problem with with pop specifically. So where is CPU DSL? Not you. Here we go.
now we should be reading. Hmm. Also, what the fuck am I doing there? That's not the right map. Anyway. Let me get out of here. So now we are sending direction. Shifting one over bits times. And then we are subtracting the number of bytes from that total number means that we are actually subtracting the number of bytes in our stack uh, uh, pointer from the max value. Perfect. Now then, read base plus offset. And then we will actually just set That's super not true. It's not unused. Signed but unused variable. There. Offset doesn't change. That's fine. I've got to run this in my head a couple times to make sure that this makes sense. It's probably wrong, but. Uh, offset should never be a 16-bit number. Our base address is a 16-bit number. But offset is the current stack pointer. Also, yeah, there's, there's no guarantee that a program doesn't just munge data on the stack. Yeah, if you're seeing a point where offset becomes 16 bits, I mean, technically here, offset will become 16 bits. Well, it'll become 9 bits, technically. Um, but that only happens... Mm. You're right. Good call. Hey, we got a lot further. That's great. Uh, except that we didn't get that much further. All right, C7DA.
So, turning. It's good. C60. C603. Yeah? C606 on stack. How did that happen? The one shift bits is unnecessary. Uh, I don't think so because we are always so. Uh, let's assume, for example, that we're adding in this case. Um, so if we are meant to be adding currently, uh, which means uh, we are normally growing downward, here we would be adding. So we would be saying plus Ooh, this gets really nasty then. Oh hey. This is actually way easier than I'm making it. We don't need to do some of this complex math. Offset is that plus one shift bits. And that is a no-op at the point where we're actually setting uh, the register because this gets masked out. We do still end up needing to descend direction, which means doing this math is correct. Um, actually, the, the easiest way here, the base plus self.send, just get the register again. Here we go. I've done all the masking. Automatically, I don't have to redo it. Great. I'm still not sure where having that 06 land on this on uh, our stack space. So, yeah, that. Yeah, so we're we're ending up at C603, which is C600. That's good. C70A, C600. Next up is C7DB. Go to C7D9. We're meant to be doing another JSR. So, time to fix the wall. So I want to see if that is good enough to get me a consistent log. My PC has already moved when I call that log, so that's good to know. Fine. 
fine. Now we at least align. That's good. Now I need to see where some 603 ends up on my stack. Next up. Back to doing this. I've already, already blown away my E600 is already on the stack. That's good. So my stack is stacks not my debug um, variables. That's not helpful. That's what we expect. Evan Grill, how's it going? You got your first software engineering job. Congratulations. I'm super happy for you. Double checking. Uh, there is more. Why can't you just send bang direction? Because that doesn't exist. Um, thankfully, working in the category of like of a a bite, like as a, as you know a physical thing, we are in a monoidal category. So we do have we have identities and we have the ability to create subtraction from addition, and that's what I'm making use of in this case. You're really nervous about it? Evan, you and I have chatted a ton. You're sharp as hell. I'm sure that you're going to do great. Uh, technically, technically, uh, Persino 2X is indeed, you are correct, it's at least two hex digits. I just happen to know that I'm going to be getting uh, exactly one byte back, so it's, it's always going to be two hex digits. You meant by that if direction is plus and minus and vice versa? Well, again, we could do that. We could uh, inspect the value of direction, and we could use that as a predicate. Predicates, however, are slow. They are substantially slower than doing really simple bit math. So bit math is one area where I feel fairly comfortable. Um, and for that reason, because we're, we're working in like the, the, the math involved in just dealing with a byte and addition over a byte. Uh, it keeps us constrained to a really nice, clean, closed system. Because we're inside of a closed system, we don't really need to do a lot of inspection and we can avoid a lot of branches in many cases. So for example, if we want to subtract one from any given value, it doesn't matter what the value is for an 8-bit byte, we can add 255 and know 100% of the time it's going to be correct. And the inverse is true as well. If we subtract 255 from an 8-bit byte, assuming that we're working uh, 
in a unsigned space, we're guaranteed to have added one. negative now. There's my first problem though. Uh, bytes one through three are um, the error codes. The so C7H2 down there is where my first problem is. It's a bit test. It sets the zero flag. So the value in the address tested and the accumulator. You're doing a bit. O one. We're loading a FF. That's expected. Do an STA. Store accumulator. Okay. Store the accumulator at wait, no, at byte one. Okay. Well, that's fine. And bit 01 equals FF. Sets negative. That's. I don't think that it should be negative. We're doing bit 01. It's 24, which is zero page. Okay, so we're ending a FF with FF should equal FF. Got it. And that's as expected. Okay, okay, okay. Still looking for that six to show up in. Yeah, to Firepole 87's point, switching languages does tend to be pretty fast. And the nice thing about picking up new languages is whatever language you learn, you will take away something. It will change the way that you view computation and writing programs in a way that is fundamental and will carry on to your next language. And that's going to happen again and again and again and again. So we've jumped to C600. That's that's our RTS that we used to be breaking at. That's good. Mm -hmm. 
there, we pushed C603. Let's double check. Let's see if C603 exists. Okay, so C603 does exist. We did a JSR C885. Now I am in fact going to We're gonna we're gonna kill cycle accuracy for a moment just so that I can step through things. So next time that you run, please give me capital letters. Thank you. We are at C771, which is a knot. Of course it's a knot. Load uh, A to be zero. Cool. Branch, not equal. C779. And we will jump to C77D. Cool. Load FF. A. To store it. EBS. Branch on over overflow uh, set. BBS to C78A. We did. No. Again. Hit. Branch on overflow clear. C792. We don't do. Then we jump to C796, uh, cool, not, do a bit, miss something. Seven nine six, yeah, not low day zero zero. Okay, three seven nine nine. We are going to that's where we are. Store a bit when it equals zero, so zero is set. Good. And we're going to branch on overflow clear to C7A3. Not. It. Branch on overflow set. C7AB, we shouldn't take this. We're going to jump to C7AF. We should take this, obviously. Not. That's where we are now. Load A, zero. Branch on uh, plus. We do not have negative set, so we should be branching here to C7B8. Not. Load A, 80. Now branch on plus. We are negative, so we shouldn't take this. C7CO. 
Not C79. No. Now we return. C78. Here's where we used to be breaking. We were return from the subroutine. C600. Stack pointer has moved back to FD, which is what we want. So now, jump to a subroutine at C7DB. We aren't doing. We're getting C7D9. And O3 ends up on the stack here. So, hex 20. Let's go take a look at that. Let's let's look at JSR again, eh? Let's let's read the description of JSR one more time. JSR pushes the address minus one of the next operation to the stack. First thing first, this minus two is definitely wrong. Per the spec, it is supposed to be the next operation minus one. Next up, return from subroutine. RTS pulls the top two bytes of the stack, low byte first. Transfers program control to that address plus one. So first thing first, let's fix that, eh? Perfect. You should not store C600 in your stack? Absolutely, we should be storing C600 in the stack. I'm quite sure of that. Let's double check. Uh, let's improve this a little bit. We don't need the full zero page here. We're not we're not doing much on the zero page. I do want the full stack visible. You're mid now. Bottom is actually going to be our Next 10 bytes. There we go. Mm, I don't like that. Surprising. Five F five. Five F seven. Five F nine. B D. C two. Uh, seven two C. Seven two D. JSR. JSR is winning things again.
This is good. Wouldn't mind a pointer for where I actually am. I think I'm working in a string. Am I working in a string right now? Yeah. Splitting. is the control Fun fact, like the only reason for me to have written a ANSI library is so that I don't have to remember any of this anymore. I can just look it up on my GitHub. Should persist. What I need. Reset, reset zero.
fixing my life here. There we go. Brilliant. Perfect. I have a ton of chat to catch up on. Isn't it most significant bite first due to little Indianness? Uh, we'll check again, but I'm pretty sure it said that it pops the least significant bite off first. RTS pulls the top two bites off of the stack. Low bite first. Some egrets. Does my DSL have any support for things like breakpoints? Nope, not yet. Seems like it might help with debugging. Yes, if things become more painful. Uh, that'll probably be something that we run into next. Yep, Mealus pretty much hits the hammer on the head for the way that I tend to think as well. With the um, caveat that uh, the less time you spend writing C, the better. Um, just kind of as a global thing. There are some cases where C is the language that needs to be used, but in that case, you're usually better off um, leaning on interfaces to C rather than having more stuff written in C just so that you can be consuming your C libraries. FFI is good. FFI is your friend. I meant MSB first for pushing. Uh, same as LSB first for pop. Yes, and I'm pretty sure that I'm doing that. Double check. Yeah. MSB pushed first. LSB pushed second. I think that there's a lot of really good interoper, like interop um, scenarios nowadays. You don't end up leaning on C too terribly often. Um, but C's FFI is one of those things that does exist in people's tool belt for a reason. You've used GraphQL a few times, and it really feels like the answer for interop. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that I agree from a systems perspective. Uh, in if, if we're talking about network um, services, then there are quite a few pretty well-reasoned um, discussions on the failings of GraphQL. Oh, not language interrupt HTTP communications. Um, gonna, gonna be real, like, this isn't a bad call in a lot of cases. GraphQL has some niceties. It comes with a lot of pain points. I have not worked with it directly, but I've seen I, I've, I've seen pain. I've seen pain from from GraphQL. Okay, C6FF is being pushed. Uh, 
uh, I think that I fixed that bug already. I did not push, uh, fix that bug already. actually might be fine now that I think about it c6ff might be fine because it was noted that you actually go to the address plus one when you RTS c735 Okay, so we we are still on track. Uh, let's hop to C seven seven D. Cool, we got to C seven seven D. Get to C seven eight two. Four. Now we can take it slow again. A, B, D, F, nine, six. Yep. Seven because we knocked. Zero into A. Store A. Bit. Zero is one. Branch and overflow clear, so we should take this branch. Fifty oh four. Well, now that's novel. Fifty oh four. It's what's being shown in the official log. Fifty oh three is what we have here. Just interesting. Oh no, 5004. I was looking slightly lower. Never mind. Can we not? C7A3. Supposed to be a knot. Oh, one. It's not a knot. It's an four A. Except that it, hmm, I don't think that I'm actually looking at the right chunk of code. Now. A4, was I offset again? No, it was not. It should now be 24. Oh, okay. I'm actually, um, my program counter is after the instruction. That's annoying. Fixable. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is actually just straight up not pulling the correct uh, bytes for me to look at. Okay, 
Well, that makes my life slightly more annoying, but easier. Uh, Samantas, C6FF, isn't that 255 bytes after we won, or did you miss something? So, um, RTS uh, pulls the top two bytes off the stack, low byte first, transfers program control to that address plus one, and I subtracted from only the low bit, didn't I? So RTS is correct. JSR is actually broken right now. Okay. So look at this. Why are Oh. Yeah. That's why. Now, four CF5s. Correct. That should be A200. Alright, now we're actually cooking with gas. Let's go. Those are RTS. T78. Get there. So this is RTS. Good. Good, 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 good. Awesome. We start at here. 20 dbc7, yep, is I'm going to subroutine at c7db, cool, and C, c6 o2 was pushed onto the stack, that is what we expect. Let's get to c6 o3, pretty sure we should make it, we did not make it there. Flag D. Hmm. That's normal. Hey, that means that we got far enough to get to a new failure. I'm stoked for that. We have carry, we have zero, we have interrupt, and use break, overflow negative. I believe that this unused bit is actually a decimal mode. That's our next JSR. C603 already there. Pushed 6F on the stack. Where did you come from, 6F? Processor flags, and 
we are now pulling those to A. Oh. We should be at FB again. Yeah, we should. Sweet. Okay. Well, it's interesting. I know where we broke. Is it because of SP? No. Calling it. F instead of P. Gonna make diffing real annoying. Okay. Easy to fix. Be honest to God, not sure what's different. Now we're starting to see some differences. All right, let's actually push out this person. It's a full log line first. So 
smart key. Actually, just in case something goes real weird with my library, I do want to catch additional stuff. Not capturing the off code. Okay, X. E S P. Uh, it doesn't appear to be line endings, but I can take a look. So the out just uses way. Good call, line endings. How oh, annoying. Who uses CRLF? It's 2020, come on.
So first time that we break is C7, E9. Doing an and zero page EF, which I don't think has anything written there. Must have something written there because the accumulator ends up as not zero. C79 is what I'm watching for. Okay. E. I no longer have the full zero page here. All right, that's mildly annoying, but fixable. Let's change our dumps again. Actually need the full zero page apparently. Full zero page, but just the last half of our stack space, not a big deal. C7EO, bring a bit, sense, loading zero, SEC, I forget what, I think, no, that's set clear, set interrupt, clear, set interrupt, set decimal, that's where we broke last time, don't give a shit about it. Pushing processor flats. That's how our 6F ends up in the stack. That makes sense. And we're pulling those flags to A. Yep. We're doing an and immediate EF. Sense. things that jump out at me here. Number one, we're lagging um, in terms of the log. The log reads the PLA, records the processor state before the PLA executes. Next, next cycle, it tells us what the next thing is going to be. 
and the previous processor state. That's fixable. Probably. It's annoying. Also, the fact that we got a 7-6 here means that I was wrong uh, when I said that decimal was here. Decimal is here. Wait. we should never see an odd number in the high nibble. Otherwise, break is set. Except up till this point, things were actually looking good. a conundrum. Things are broken subtly, which is fun. Yeah, I'm not showing the D flag. The, the D flag shouldn't matter, but I mean, I can fix that. What's the goal of this project? So many numbers. Uh, this is uh, a um, overall a DSL through which uh, CPU emulators can be described. Um, presently, we have a extremely not working um, 6502 emulator. Let's slow it down here and watch. Let's follow from here. C8, okay. Branch to C8OA is a knot. Low day 80. Cool. Store A. Type 1. Bit type 1. Negative is set. Expect. Set D, you should get set here. Load A0, yep. Set clear. Set carry, yep, carry is set. Push uh, processor flags. It's pushed, pull to A. Seven is and a ia doesn't happen. 
almost certainly because decimal is actually meant to be up here. And pull up the official data sheet. So, oh, decimal is actually four, third bit. Oh, interesting. Okay, so break actually doesn't work the way that I expected it to. Apparently break um, does not represent the uh, CPU being put into a uh, broken state. So from bit zero, we are carry zero interrupt disable. Carry zero interrupt disable. Decimal. Okay, so that was correct. Next up is... Break. Break actually has to be handled specially. So bits four and five handled specially, specifically. After PHP, BRK, IRQ, okay, well, what is what is the BRK instruction? I thought that was halt. Break. BRK, effects flag, B. This is a non maskable interrupt and increments the program counter by one. For an RTI, we'll go to the address of break plus two. Break may be used to place a two byte instruction, debugging, and subsequent RTI. Correct. Ah, okay. BRK actually does set the break flag. The break flag is not meant to Yo, Ty Tuesday. Thank you very much for the big host. Um, anybody in here probably has, well, middling taste at at least um i mean if you're sitting here and you weren't watching ty you made a mistake but the good news is that you can fix that mistake go follow ty ty is good everybody who's joining welcome in i'm tina uh most of the time i do speed runs but right now i am working on a well a domain specific language uh specifically to uh, by which we can describe emulators. And uh, kind of using a 6502 as a proof of concept for that. 
been a fun project so far. It's probably going to be a few more weeks before the 6502 is actually working, but we are getting there bit by bit, um, walking through a, a pretty good verification ROM that was built for NES emulator developers. Right now, looking through um, just tons and tons of um, white papers specifically on how the 6502 CPU works internally. It's great. So, all right, so PLP and RTI need to ignore bits five and four. Be eight. That's right, isn't it? I'm not a complete idiot. Hey, cool. Good news, everyone. Yeah, what's the other one, I think? Byte, more bits five and four. supposed to Some of my references don't show break as pushing um, instructions to stack. So that's cool. Real cool. Alright, well, I'm ignoring it. Yeah, uh, NVD, B. Yeah. Here we go. NV, X, B. The IZC. Yep, that's what the um, manual says as well. Four and five. Yeah, we're solid. Great. 
breaking before. Or way past where I was breaking before. I'm sure things are very off the rails. Yeah, um, the the bite at uh, zero page one, or zero page zero, uh, changing values is usually not a good sign. Anyway, I suspect we're way off the rails there. E9, E9. Flags. 6D, not 6F. Should be 60, not 6 out. So area is being set and it shouldn't be. supposed to set carry set flags negative and zero was it the pole might have been the pole doesn't show strange all right uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna step through the program and we're gonna see what happens so c79 you're watching for c7 pc and such i should try to implement a breakpoint feature eh. That's a fantastic idea, except that it's almost 3 a.m. And that would probably probably push beyond the edge of this stream. We've made a ton of progress this stream, and I'm real happy about that. Um, I wouldn't want to... Make a hacky breakpoint real quick. That would be pretty easy. EO. So C7 EO is setting a bit. Yep. Bit test. Load a zero. Yep. Set clear. Set interrupt. Set decimal.
push processor flags, 7A, PLA, 7A, we do an AND, PIA, like that's We get 6F. We get 6F. That's right. That's why I was thinking. Because next up, we end up with compare 6F, and it is, it's going to work correctly. So we'll do that. We'll do the branch equals. We hop over to F. So this is indicative of the logging function being broken. Which goes back to the cycle accuracy problem that we had. All right, let's fix the log and maybe I'll implement a breakpoint after that. Where is our DSL? Here's the DSL. Matea, welcome in. Recently worked on your own 6502 related project, so click the stream when you saw the title. Right on. Lifehack just never stops streaming? That's smart. That's real smart. Yeah, I. good call. I'll have to shift some things around in my life to uh, to accommodate that, but yeah, I'm just. I guess I guess that's the way it's got to be, though. All right. We know, we know that the answer is correct. I'm really confused about the fact that that's the first time that things appear to lag. That doesn't make sense to me. This, that keeps throwing me, and I keep on coming back to that specific issue. So, why does set carry work as expected? That's real weird, right? C seven two. C 
carry worse. But this end, for some reason, doesn't. That's bewildering. this up. We are and immediate. X29. So confused by it. I have no reason to believe the log is the problem. Gosh, I have no clue. Mythander, uh, do I have a particular purpose for the simulator or just wanted to make one for its own sake? Uh, so I do tech streams uh, once a week. Um, the purpose of that is purely to be um, didactic. So for the most part, I tend to Take things slow, um, interact with chat a lot. I've been pretty bad about that this particular stream, but uh, sometimes, sometimes you're just you're trying to figure out weird bugs that are confusing. Um, and I think that there's value for seeing somebody who, in theory at least, is not totally awful at computers. I think there's value in seeing them fall on their face now and again as well. Um, the purpose of the 6502 emulator in particular is to validate the um, the, the domain-specific language that I wrote for describing emulators. Kappa votes, welcome in. Um, and you probably, like, that probably answers your question.
you know what? I think the easiest way This falls apart with modern processors. But I think that what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move I'm going to move the So specifically, because we have a variable number of cycles that a given instruction might take, um, writing a generic way of handling that is, and, and keeping the emulator cycle accurate is surprisingly difficult. It might just be that I continue not worrying about it. For now. Why Ruby? Shouldn't I be using assembly for efficiency? Well, if I wanted to be writing something in assembly, I would be. I do enough security work that I live in assembly uh, when I'm doing things like writing exploits for binaries. Um, Ruby, however, particularly in cases where being didactic is part of the goal, um, is a really strong language. Ruby is a great language for either being able to demonstrate or being able to explore concepts of uh, computing. And in particular, uh, it is easy to say, hey, you should write things in assembly, uh, you know, because that's more efficient. But man, writing fast assembly is very, very difficult. Realistically, if what I cared about more than anything else was something that was going to have the, um, the best running speed, I'd probably be writing it in C because I guarantee that a C compiler is going to do a much better job of optimization than I am. But in general, and especially when you're prototyping, uh, I tend to recommend avoiding assembly or C. Those are languages which need to be justified. And more often than not, it's fast is a poor justification. Arrakis, am I going to watch the new Dune movie? Uh, yeah, I am cautiously optimistic for it. We'll see. We'll see how it is. I'm a big fan of the books. Um, I actually liked Lynch's Dune, which is... It's, it's an opinion that a lot of people do not share, but I thought it was quite good. Personally, you default to Python because it's quite nice and you can switch to PyPy if you need performance. Yeah, uh, the PyPy team is amazing. I have nothing but respect for them. Um, it, yeah, PyPy is, is real damn good. Um, for those of you who aren't aware, uh, PyPy is a jitted Python written in Python. It is great. Um, for JavaScript because the debug tools are amazing and V8 is super fast. Um, I don't... So I actually don't know any JavaScript. Uh, I, that's not true. I know exactly enough JavaScript to have done all the Microsoft Blue Hat challenges, which is like challenges for circumventing uh, security controls that are implemented in JavaScript and shit like that. Um, I, I would definitely not recommend that I <laughs> write in, anything that matters in JavaScript, not with my level of experience. Um, I've been writing Ruby since 2002. So it does make it kind of an easy language to just 
fall back on as a default. Um, depending on what I'm writing, uh, I mean, I still maintain some C. I do Haskell, I do Erlang, I do Ruby, obviously. Um, there's plenty of good options, and depending on what you're writing, you know, sticking with the option that makes the most sense to you is probably the right choice. Gertis, yeah, Rust seems really cool. I'm not anywhere near familiar enough with Rust to have strong opinions either way, but everything that I've seen is impressive. If you were to start a serious programming project in the near future, it would probably be Rust or maybe Haskell, depending. Both solid choices. Um, if you need compile time guarantees, yeah, like those, OCaml is solid. Um, I'm not aware of any dependently typed, dependent typed uh, languages that are currently where they need to be to be um, a good choice for like a, you know, capital R real capital P project, but I would be interested to see if um, if, de if dependent typing made it into that realm very soon. Lambda Coder, how's it going? Yeah, I, so I've done closure. Um, I love Lisp. I really love Lisp. The reason that I like Ruby and the reason that Ruby stuck with me for the last 18 years is because of how much of it feels inspired by Lisp. Closure didn't offer enough to me compared to Racket. For it to be appealing and it is a fairly syntaxy Lisp dialect. I think that it's a good language, and I've known amazing programmers who use it, but it didn't grab me. Okay.
slightly worse in terms of branching. But they actually break at the correct spot now. There we go, we have a break point. Now our V2 will be nil. I've just realized one thing, <clears throat> and it should have been pretty obvious from the get-go, but there's no good place to put the log here. And what just um, hit me like a ton of bricks is the fact that well, this is exactly what I want to see. This is exactly perfect. Um, so clearly, I just need to put the logging in the, um, the actual debugger, like a reasonable person. Like, this is not hard. in the CPU on the log. Okay.
the FFM. Really? Oh, yes. Hey, that actually fixes another Vince Voiced error. Just accidentally. Perfect. You've really been enjoying the explicitness of this. Hell yeah. <clears throat> I really like um, what I've seen out of Rust's Boro system. Um, the type system seems really well thought out. Quite like that as well. What? We're no longer Seventy-nine. Still the same thing. I'm looking at accumulator, not flags. Was it, maybe it's just an and is supposed to be impacting flags, and it's not. negative, not zero. Our first flag, carry. 
Yep, we shouldn't be carrying. X flags. Negative. Zero. Okay, we set carry here. We never, never cleared carry. How did I map out the instruction set? Did the 6502 have a manual? Yes, there is a really high quality uh, manual for 6502. Um, I am actually largely working off of the 65CO2 manual, which for everything that exists is backwards compatible. The scan is just substantially more readable. Yeah, Seer, uh, basically my take on that for Rust Borrow system is that you are playing the part of the, of the Haskell runtime a little bit. You are a little bit more in control of when mutations occur at the machine level. I mean, make no mistake, as much as we love to pretend, you know, writing Haskell, that things are pure. Like, we're still working on von Neumann machines. Shit's still changing all the fucking time. But it is nice to have the layer of abstraction between you and that. Which often, you know, it, it removes several classes of bugs. I feel like I'm missing something here. But I'm pretty sure that carry wasn't supposed to be cleared, right? That's the only thing that makes sense to me, is that...
there was, was there a compare that I missed? Set, carry, interrupt, decimal, pushed flags, popped flags. specifically after pop A. Sets a zero or negative flag if necessary. Just double checking, low bit is carry. Alright, um I'm stumped. I'm suspecting that maybe the log is wrong? That seems like it would have been caught, though. Either way. Shouldn't AND EF clear the in bit? Uh, AND always operates on the accumulator, the, the A register. So you will notice, here were AND EF. And it clears clears one bit um, as expected. Delay and is it and would be even weirder. But we'll check. Contents of the accumulator and the continent specified location. Yep. Yeah, Harry is not affected by an AND from every single resource I can find. Now, this instruction, the compare, that would make sense. We would not, we would not carry, and carry being dropped for this specifically. to do some research to figure this one out. This feels real confusing. And I'm extremely reticent to say that I'm in the right here. I just don't understand how I'm in the wrong. PHP means push beyond stack, correct. DLA pops it back in A, correct. So you'll see PHP, that nothing happens that you can see because this is just looking at registers. DLA, after we hit DLA, 7F is, is there, but 
somehow the processor flag drops carry for two instructions. Now the compare instruction, maybe, like that, that makes sense, that might twiddle it, but, but our big, the thing that's, that's different here is not A, A is the same between the official log and our run. But our flags are, are where it's different. And that's weird. Because we haven't done anything nearby that should impact carry. So I'm going to have to do some research. Um, we still made tons of progress today. We started off with the um, with the test uh, ROM breaking within a few steps, and now we're making it we're making it pretty decently in. We're we're 73 instructions in, and the wonderful thing about that is the longer we go, the more instructions we catch a bug in, the easier and easier it's going to be to get the entire ROM running. Yes, and affects the N and Z flags. Which we are definitely setting. This is how all emulators work. They all simulate the CPU. Okay, um... I'm gonna give you a very, very fuzzy answer here, and I'm gonna say yes. That is, broadly speaking, in extremely vague and fuzzy terms accurate. Some emulators are implemented in languages like this, in languages like Ruby. Some of them are, are implemented in C, or uh, there's a couple that I'm aware of that are written in assembler, although C is a very common, or C++, both very common choices, just because C and C++ mirror what happens at the hardware level Pretty nicely. They're, they're reasonable choices for something like this. Um, you'll also encounter FPGAs. So you can have an emulator that is implemented in hardware, which comes with some benefits and some trade-offs, of course. Interfacing with it is harder. Um, debugging is typically substantially harder. But if what I really need is a hardware implementation of a CPU that's no longer being manufactured, and I need it to be, you know, able to be interfaced with some system that exists in the real world, an FPGA is a pretty darn good choice for something like that. BeastNess is in C++, yeah. Yeah, and near the primary author of BeastNess is just fucking amazing. And yeah, it's this is a very common workflow. Um, you read your instruction, you figure out what it's supposed to do, you do the work, and then you, you rinse and repeat forever. That's fundamentally how CPUs work, which is pretty darn cool. The result of the AND instruction has the seventh bit set and IN is set. It seems by logic that removing the seventh bit from register A, we're also clearing the IN flag. The IN flag is not what's being cleared. The carry flag is being cleared after PLA. That's that's the problem we're running into here. It's true, it's, it's CPUs all the way down until you hit turtles. At which point it's turtles the rest of the way down. 
But yeah, um, certainly wish that uh, we had gotten a little bit further. I'm going to do, and I, I know that I have said multiple times that I prefer not to do um, any sort of work off stream for these particular um, streams. I'm going to do some research on this one, and I'm going to do my best to have an answer by Tuesday. I'm real confused. This is a weird behavior that does not fully make sense to me. What I'm able to tell is that the pop instruction is not supposed to modify flags. But for some reason in this log, we, we pop um, when we pop, we lose the carry flag, and that's just... That one's weird to me. So I've, I've got to figure that out. Uh, Samantha's, if, if you see documentation saying that ELA modifies flags, please uh, tell me where, because I have not found it. The log shows that it's modifying C, but that's that doesn't appear to be a normal thing. Okay. Darn, I was really hoping that you could have just shown me where I was wrong. That would have been the easiest. Um, that would have been the easiest thing to have happen. Regardless, I'm pretty happy with the progress that was made today. Um, more than anything, I hope that everybody else here has had fun. Um, for anybody who's hanging out hoping to pick things up, I hope that this has been, you know, instructive, if nothing else. Um, and for the people that I, I already know that are um, well beyond the level of, you know, pretty low level didactic streams, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for adding just a great community aspect to this and helping other people out with their questions in chat and so on. These streams are always really fun. I, I just have a blast with them. And, um, I feel very lucky that, that I have so many folks who want to hang out, watch me do programming, watch me do, I mean, sometimes it's security, sometimes it's programming, sometimes it's reversing. It's, for the next little bit, it's probably going to continue being programming while we get this worked out. Yeah, um, I think that's going to be it.